Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ella Travis and in today's video we are going to be talking about Nicholas Browning. Nicholas Wagoner Browning, he was born in Maryland on February 9th of 1992. He had a 13 year old brother named Gregory and another 11 year old brother named Benjamin. They were three boys born to Tamara and John Browning. John Browning, he was a prominent and successful business lawyer in the community. The wife, Tamara, was a stay-at-home mother. In the Brownings, they were known to be one of the richest families in the town. The boys were well liked by their schoolmates and just everyone else in their neighborhood. Each of them were involved with some type of sport and their parents were always at their games supporting them. And Nicholas, the oldest, was a Boy Scout who was actually one rank away from becoming an Eagle Scout, which is the highest rank that one can achieve. He was also in the school band and he played lacrosse as well. So this crime that I'm going to talk about, it takes place in early 2008 when the Brownie family was living in Cockeysville, Maryland, which was an upper class suburb of Baltimore. Nicholas Browning, he was 15 years old at the time of this incident. He was a sophomore at Delaney High School and he was actually an honor student there as well. So the date that this crime occurs was on February 1st of 2008. Nicholas, he spent the night playing video games at a friend's house. The next day, him and a few of his friends went out to the mall and it was then that Nicholas, he invited several people over for a party that night. At some point, he said he needed to go take care of something and he ended up leaving for five hours before coming back and he never explained what he did. His friend drove him home the next day. It was around 5 p.m. and when he came back out of his house a few minutes later, he was very frantic and he was telling his friend that his entire family had just been shot. Nick, he ended up calling 911 and saying that he thought his father had died of a heart attack, which is very weird considering what I'm about to tell you. When first responders got to the house, they were shocked by what they found. 45-year-old John Browning was dead on a couch on the first floor, and it was very clear that he did not die from a heart attack because there was blood everywhere. Like, it was absolutely everywhere. Clear. It was obvious that he had been murdered. Police noted that they had never saw anything like this. Police looked through the rest of the house and they found the bodies of 44-year-old Tamara, 13-year-old Gregory, and 11-year-old Benjamin. They had all been shot to death in their beds, and investigators later determined that they had been shot and killed with a 9mm. The house was absolutely wrecked. It was ransacked. It was pretty bad. But they later determined that nothing had actually been stolen. It had just been messed up. A strange thing about this was that while police were showing up there, there were kids showing up expecting a party, but instead they were encountering police and it was a murder scene. Investigators later determined that John had been the first to get shot, then the wife, Tamara, Greg was third, and the last to be shot was Benjamin. At first, Nicholas denied knowing anything about the murders. Investigators noted that Nick really didn't seem bothered or even really cared about the fact that his entire family had been shot while they were asleep. He didn't care, it didn't affect him that he was the first one to find them, and police became even more suspicious when the key to the family gun safe was found under his mattress. And it's very weird because I cannot help but note the similarities between Nicholas Browning and Ronald DeFeo. Of course, it's a very big age difference, but the key events are kind of lining up here. Like, he shot his family. Nicholas shot his family. He was the first one to discover them. He was at a friend's house. He spent the entire day, you know, just out and about. So they asked him about this key. They asked him why it was under his mattress. And his response was, I really wasn't thinking about the key. The key means nothing and say it like that. I watched parts of the interview that was in the documentary and the documentary is only like 12 minutes long so it's not very informative but he was so defensive throughout the whole thing. And guess what type of gun was found to be missing from the gun safe? A 9mm handgun. 
they found the gun and it had been wiped clean and it was sitting neatly on a workbench. After several hours of questioning, it was around 1 a.m. at this point the next morning. He finally admitted to shooting his family after police found several inconsistencies in his story. He was arrested right then and there and charged with four counts of first degree murder and he was denied bail at a hearing later that day. They later determined from evidence found at the crime scene and at Nick's confession that this killing was premeditated. He put gloves on before handling the gun so there wouldn't be fingerprints. And he brought along with him while he was doing the shooting an extra clip in case he ran out of ammo. And Nicholas claimed that the reason that he did this was that his father was an alcoholic and that his father did nothing but abuse him for years. He said his mother was an enabler who allowed the abuse to continue. And as for the brothers, he said he killed them to make this scene of a robbery look more plausible. The district attorney obviously disagreed with this and he said that Nicholas killed his family in cold blood because of the money he would inherit if he got away with it. So Nick Browning's other living extended family members, they went to the police and asked if there was any possibility that he may ever get out and live on the outside world. They said no, since he was psychotic and had already committed a homicide. He was extremely likely to reoffend if he ever got out. When Nicholas, he was being interviewed by detectives, he talked about his parents' wealth. He also said his parents were good to him, although they were a little strict from time to time. And during the interrogation, Nicholas did not bring up the abuse or say he was abused. He only brought that up after the fact. The other kids at school said that Nick often joked about killing his parents several times before he actually did it. He would talk about it mainly on the school bus and in the cafeteria. One student said that Nick always talked about how rich his father was and how he wanted some of that money. Another student said that Nick had a whole other side to him than what the rest of the world saw. He would seriously hurt his little brothers, like he would really hurt them. And he would also steal from his parents' liquor cabinets in quite an excessive amount. He would also steal his parents' car and drive it without a permit or a license. The student also said that he was a spoiled rich kid who made fun of people with disabilities. It's reported that John had wanted him to go somewhere with him that Saturday after the murders, but Nick wanted to stay home and party with some friends. And on the night of the killings, he apparently left one of his friend's houses and didn't come back until about five hours later which is what I said earlier in the video. In October of 2008, a now 16 year old Nick Browning pleaded guilty to all four counts of first degree murder. In 2009, after reaching a plea agreement with prosecution, he was given four life sentences, two of which are to be ran concurrently, which is two at the same time, and then the other two are consecutively, which is one right after the other. With good behavior, there is a possibility that this person may only have to spend 23 years in prison. During the trial, his lawyers argued that the murders were results of several years of abuse suffered by him at the hands of his alcoholic father, and that the children, all of them, even though they weren't there to speak for themselves, had referred to their father as Hitler. The killings had occurred because Nick had been battered and beaten to a point where his juvenile mind could conceive no other alternative to relieve the pain other than to eliminate it. Nick Browning, he is currently serving his sentence at North Branch Correctional Institution in Cumberland, Maryland. And the earliest that he could possibly be released is 2031 when he will be 49 years old. In five years after he was sentenced, he had spent five years in prison at this point, he was 21. His motion to reduce his four life sentences was denied. And his attorneys argued that his multiple life sentences were preventing him, or did prevent him, from getting mental health treatment while he was still a minor. And yeah, that is, um, that's basically the Nick Browning case. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe. Like, literally fucking subscribe to this shit.
So I've recently learned that 85% of the people that watch my videos, they are not subscribed. So uh, fucking do that. We hit 50 subscribers, a total of 50. Oh my fucking God, that is so great. Also peep the new background. I got some $8 net lights from the dollar store and I hung them up on my wall. So now we have a, a cute little background. Yes, I will see you guys in my next video.